Hey YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. I have an updated Vanguard latency, FPS, and optimization slash visibility guide for you guys. Completely updated with the actual release of the game. I have played the game for about eight hours and I have spent about eight hours trying to optimize this game. Just to let you know. Now, I want to make this video very short and sweet as possible. Just to let you guys know, if you're into any kind of competitive edge in your game, please hit that subscribe button and that like button. It'll help me out in the algorithm. I said I want to make the video quick. So guys, here is my optimization pack final everything you need to know about getting the max frames and lowest input lag in your pc you can only do so much with the game most of it is your hardware and how you set up your hardware just to let you know everything is included in here if you're uncomfortable with doing a bunch of overclocks at least follow this one or this one i don't care if you want to be on 10 or 11 just follow one of these now i do have a config you can download in the downloads folder link in the description it is just under Call of duty vanguard so we're going to put that on our desktop for now but we'll continue to this later but you guys should be fine just using your own settings in the game and setting it to what I would recommend anyway and just quickly going through the config regardless anyway. Real quick, things actually matter if you're not going to follow my optimization pack video. And guys, you can only do so much with the game. Please stop watching videos where they just show what you can do with the game. There's a lot more that you can do with your actual PC to get more frames and lower input lag, any kind of an advantage. It is. Follow the optimization pack, please. You'll save yourself a lot of time and headache. Good RAM, speed and timings, make sure XMP is on. Good CPU, overclocking your CPU. Good graphics card, especially for this game. Guys, this game is stupidly graphics card heavy, just to let you know. Overclocking your graphics card, it's going to help heaps in this game. Blocking GPU core, not so much with this game, but it might help 1% since 0.1s. Stability hardware, no faults, unstable overclocks or overheating, no faulty RAM, no CPU overheating. Fresh Windows install always helps if it's old. Power plan, timer resolution. A good driver, graphics driver, and the graphics driver settings. Minimal background tasks, optimal game graphics settings, which we're covering here today. Mouse with low delay, controller with low delay, keyboard with low delay, and monitor with low delay. They're the main things covered there. Guys, right, go into your game launcher and go ahead and set Battle.net to exit Battle.net completely. Battle.net does not need to open while you're playing the game. Try to close out all other background tasks that you have running. As far as the config here, easiest thing to do is go ahead and extract it, okay? And there should just be one folder here, Call of Duty Vanguard. If you see two, drag this one to the desktop. So when you open it, you should just see this and then players folder. Go to your documents folder. Okay. Go ahead and delete this one. All right. Just drag this one to here. You guys don't have to use the config if you don't want to, but if you want to save some time, you can go ahead and download it. Okay. Let's quickly talk about the config and editing the config. Not too much you can do in here, even though it looks like you can do a lot of stuff, guys. I've tried playing around with this stuff in here and it keeps resetting all the graphic settings back to like the highest or default. Okay. So you can't play around with it too much but as far as video memory scale that should be set correctly automatically to you some people have an issue where it sets it too high so if you feel like it's set it too high you can set it down a little bit render core work account okay this is a little bit different to the modern warfare engine i tested it even though it is the modern warfare engine best thing to do is go to task manager go to performance go to cpu check how many cores you have i have 16 just set it to the cores the game should usually handle this and do this properly just make sure it does set this to actual cores not your threads, set it to your actual cores there. Okay, if I was scrolling down here, okay, elevated priority. Now, this is an interesting one. If you guys have a really, really low-end CPU, okay, um, maybe playing on a laptop or you're playing on a CPU that might be like you know, eight years old or so, or just maybe like a, a one of the cheaper uh, systems, I recommend turning this to zero so it sets the game in normal priority rather than high, especially if you are experiencing really bad mouse stutters in-game with your rig because maybe you have not enough cores for the actual game that was an issue in the modern warfare engine because the modern warfare this engine does force high priority so if you have a really low end rig this could help you quite a lot by setting this to zero and then saving it to normal priority like i said there was some stuff that you could do in the beta to get rid of that annoying sun glare that was pinned in the last video that i did for the beta it seems every time i change this it resets it in the game that might not be true for every game update that comes out by the time you're watching this video. But just a heads up, really you're wasting your time trying to play with this. Just use the settings in the game and it's going to save these. Jump straight into the game and cover the settings that actually matter, guys. Okay, so we've got account and network. Go ahead and turn graphic content off because it does use a little bit more GPU usage having this on um, with the graphic content. This game is so GPU heavy, guys. Just by you lowering your resolution, if you don't have the top of the line graphics card, is going to boost your frames even for my top of the line graphics card 2080 ti my 6900 xt one of the best cards you can get the 6900 xt that i have i get substantially more frames bumping down the resolution now if you have a really really powerful graphics card and a media man cpu bumping down resolution won't help then 
okay? Because you're making more CPU bound and you might not have the most powerful CPU. But just a heads up, the game is really GPU heavy. You want to boost some frames. Turning some things down is going to help you quite a lot. Let's go to interface here. Scroll down. There is some, some stupid decisions that have made in this game. Go ahead and turn crosshair bobbing off. I don't know why they put into that into the game. That's really annoying. Skip intro movie just because it gets annoying. That's a personal preference thing though. It's time for a quick audio test for any kind of competitive advantage as far as it comes to footsteps. So we're in between minus 42 and minus 36. Okay. So we'll just keep that in mind. Now let's try with TV speakers. I'm going to solo that. So that's a lot louder as far as the footsteps volume in saying that there is also ambient noise which is quite mid heavy as well. So the footsteps seem mid heavy and the ambient sound seems mid heavy but I would say that's a little bit better as far as being able to hear the footsteps. A little bit louder. Let's go ahead and test headphones. Yeah so that's um not as good as TV speakers. But in saying that, there seems like there's less um, ambient noise as well with that headphone. And let's go ahead and test night mode. Now, I could be wrong here. I would suggest anything from night mode to TV speaker. Okay, guys, quick update. I've actually been playing the game for like eight hours yesterday. I really find headphones the best. Um, because the other presets seem to add a lot of like ambient noise in the background as well which is distracting and there's hardly any footsteps in this game anyway but I'll take that as you will I do prefer headphones for actually playing the game audio I've kind of already covered that let's go straight to gameplay in graphic settings uh field of view it doesn't matter it's personal preference and changing field of view doesn't affect fps or latency just to let you guys know this is personal preference, but color customization, because the visibility is really bad in the game, I do like to set the enemies to purple. Personal preference there, okay? Now, scrolling down, that's a personal preference, whether you wanted to zoom in or not. Like camera movement, uh, this is a must. Just set it all the way down to a minimum. I don't know why this is turned up. There shouldn't be cam camera shake or camera movement at all. Motion blur on both weapon and world should be turned off regardless. Okay, so we're kind of, if you've used the config, most of this should be done for you already. You will probably have to set your... Uh, re resolution and your refresh rate correctly. If you have a medium to decent end graphics card, guys, I wouldn't recommend absolutely everything in low. I'd recommend cranking up the texture resolution and the anisotropic. Anisotropic doesn't affect FPS at all, so all of you guys should have this cranked up to high, no matter what, because it's going to make visibility a hell of a lot better. Okay, now particle quality doesn't work like it did in MW. You'd crank this up and it would help FPS. It doesn't help this game, just to let you guys know. And another thing I'd recommend if you have a medium to really decent end graphics card, crank the distances up so as far as that if you have like medium to low end you might want to play around with like lower textures but for me this is sort of my config absolutely everything on low okay but i have texture resolution high and a strop brick on high i have level of distance range high nearby level of detail high distance level of detail high everything on low the only two you definitely want on is cache sunset shadows and cache spot shadows so for you guys that are on a medium to low end rig and you feel like bumping down resolution helps your frames you don't have to change the actual resolution you can change the render resolution i'm on 1080p now so if it went 66 percent render resolution that would be 720p that's something you can try out there is also dlss in this game if you have a 3000 series graphics card or you have one of the newer amd graphics cards so it's dlss for nvidia and for amd it's fidelity fx super resolution Okay, so you can try that. So say in 1080p, you put it in performance, it'll try to scale at 720p. In my opinion, bumping down the resolution actually with the render resolution scaler looks better, but th that's something to test out for yourself. Now a must on this game, regardless whether you're on Nvidia or AMD, it's really nice they've added this in here. AMD's graphics control panel sharpening is life-changing. It's a must because anti-aliasing is forced on this game. There's no way to turn it off. So I highly recommend you guys turning that to on. If you have any other third-party apps like SweetFX or if you are using your NVIDIA sharpening, turn that off for this specific game and just use this. As far as everything else, guys, um, really just have everything low and off because none of, none of the rest of the stuff really helps for visual quality if that's what you're after. Or, you know, none, there's no secret setting that you could turn on or off 
to get more FPS. Anti-aliasing quality low. Anti-aliasing the lowest anti-aliasing. That is the clearest, but um, anisotropic for all of you guys. Have it on high. Texture resolution, play around. If you've got a medium graphics card, play around with this. See how you go with your frames. But the biggest thing that you can do if you do have a very powerful CPU and memory is bumping down the render resolution. For reference, a client that I recently worked with has a 9900K, 4000C16 RAM, okay? He has the same graphics card as me and the same overclock. Him bumping down the resolution to 66% did not yield him any more frames. It was the same. Me on my 5950X with a tuned RAM 3800C14, me bumping this down to 66 yielded me an extra 100 FPS. So it's really going to depend on sort of the bottleneck of the system. Let's go to display. Not too much to cover here. Don't use VSync. Frame rate limit. Uh, it depends if you're using G-Sync or not. The sweet spot for this game, guys, you want to at least get 300 FPS. I know that can be really hard for a lot of people, but once you get to 300, you're sweet with input lag. Anything lower than 200 starts to get a little bit air. And you'll see my test soon. Okay. Um, brightness, I feel like it was the same as MW. I feel like going a 50-55, it looks too washed out. Play with your monitor settings at that stage if you need to go up more than that. Um, and scrolling down here, none of it actually really matters. Now, on-demand texture streaming. This does matter a little bit. I don't know why. It's kind of still a thing. Turn this off. Why? Because you end up getting like the packet loss icon a lot more. I don't know why. Because it'll like randomly download while you're actually playing a match. Not like in the menu. And it's given lots of people with not the greatest internet like more packet loss issues. And, and ping kind of spiking up and down. So I just recommend turning it off at that point. Honestly. Um, and everything else is sort of personal preference. So let's cover the actual latency results now. So these are the two test rigs, guys. We have the first one, which is my Intel NVIDIA system with a 10900 k 360 AIO locked core. So nothing crazy, not an overclock, just locking the factory turbo boost. A basic single rank 4000 C18 kit, 2x8 gigabyte. 2080 Ti with the 472.12 minimal driver, which is what I recommend for this game. Full screen optimization is turned on. It's forced on anyway because it's DirectX 12. A locked GPU core without an overclock on the graphics card. So basically, guys, it's just locked core, XMP, and locked GPU. Okay. On the AMD system, the all out system, we have the 5950X, the 360 AIO, a PPO, nice fat overclock. I have highly tuned dual rank RAM kit with all sub timings tuned, like all out. The 6900XT with a really aggressive overclock. Now, this is the driver that I recommend. Get the recommended for AMD. Do not get the newest one. It is really buggy, the newest one. Get the recommended. That's the version there that I'd recommend. I've got a locked core with a hefty GPU overclock and then the 360 hertz monitor. So those are the two test rigs. One sort of, obviously they're both high end, but you guys want to see AMD versus AMD, Intel versus AMD, and AMD versus Nvidia. Okay guys, this is on the streaming conservative PC and as you can see, we're getting about 330 FPS in 2080 Ti, all low settings 720p and the latency result is about 19.3 milliseconds. Now guys, this is on 1080p, still on complete low settings, we're getting about 260 FPS and the input lag is, let's go have a look over here, it is about 22 milliseconds. Okay guys, time to test 4K and Reflex Plus Boost. This is 4K complete ultra settings. As you can see, we're getting at about 170 FPS. And the input lag, if we go have a look, 29 milliseconds input lag. Now let's turn Reflex Plus Boost completely off in 4K absolute ultra settings. Obviously, FPS is going to be the same. We're getting about 33 milliseconds input lag. So yes, Reflex is working and doing its job here. If you're on a medium to low end graphics card, you definitely want this enabled. You want it enabled regardless anyway. Now let's look at the AMD system. You guys can get a bit of a gist on how this kind of game kind of scales on really well. Good end hardware on medium to low end hardware. It will scale similarly, but a lot more aggressively. This is best case scenario that I could get in 720p. Just to let you guys know, this little monitoring over overlay graph FPS mod does affect my latency by about 0.6 milliseconds. So these results are in a match. Expect 1.5 milliseconds higher input lag in an actual match because there's a lot going on. There's players running around and stuff like that. This is about 14.2 milliseconds in an actual match. Now, not in an actual match, we're getting about 13.71 milliseconds. So going to saying if I didn't have FPS mod over the game right here, I can get this down to 13, which is actually incredible. So in saying that, and I wish I said this earlier in the video, uh, kudos to the game developers. I'm seeing a lot 
a lower input lag here versus Modern Warfare Engine. The lowest I could get this in the Modern Warfare Engine, in these sort of settings, was about 22 milliseconds, 21 milliseconds um, with the same sort of frame. Hopefully Battlefield does the same because the beta was really high. The beta of this game was really high just like the Modern Warfare Engine. As you can see here, changing field of view did absolutely nothing. Okay, there you go. It's the results for normal priority. Didn't really change anything. What you guys got to look at here is the averages here. And you can see all the data here at my 1% and 0.1s. So I decided to disable uh, CPU zero like lots of people say, and that didn't help. Like I would call that inconclusive, honestly, at the end of the day. Um, let me go to 100 results, roughly. There you go, didn't help. Um, lots of people tell you to do that in YouTube videos. It doesn't do anything. Optimize your PC properly, like following my videos. Um, I want to disable hyperthreading or SMT, and I didn't do this uh, in BIOS. I could actually do it with a game XE file. Um, and it actually made her latency come up, so don't don't disable that for this game. Going to 1080p, we'll see latency come up quite a little bit here. Okay. And we've got about 15 milliseconds roughly, give or take. Obviously, there's more GPU usage, as you can see here. We're up to about 93 GPU use, GPU usage. So in my case, yes. And also, we did see the FPS come down as well. So that's why latency uh, came up. Okay. 1440p, I wanted to test latency for 1440p. It's still pretty reasonable considering this game engine. Our GPU usage is about 96%. I can't see that very well. And our FPS has gone down to about 318. So yeah, that's a given 1440p. Um, now 4K, this is where it gets super interesting. Yeah, I wanted to test Texas streaming on because obviously I had it off. And there was no difference there, but it's more about sort of like the internet issue that I was saying. Um, so I recommend just having Texas streaming off. Now I wanted to test Filmic um, SMMA uh, T2X, which is maxed out all the way. Um, and it didn't really make too much of a difference here on a really good card on a um, medium to lower end card. You'll see more of a difference because the frames will get affected more. Um, now I wanted to test FSR performance in performance mode. So this is uh, 1080p, but it's scaling in um, 720p with um, you know FSR, which is similar to what DLSS would be. Uh, doing 1080p and DLSS and it brought the latency down to exactly the same pretty much as using 720p. Now this is the uh, sharpening filter. I want to test the sharpening filter. Uh, no difference there compared to our normal 1080p results so that's fine but the sharpening doesn't affect anything and that's why I love AMD sharpening and it's so cool to see that you video guys can use that. Now when we cap the FPS down to 333 as you can see not really a difference here not like a huge difference in 1080p so like I said before you want to at least be at 300 and you're fine now i wanted to cap to 200 fps now this is when things start to go bad uh you know add another like five milliseconds on top because we're getting 20.73 so yeah you know you are at a slight disadvantage i'm um, having lower frames with this especially with this game engine i uh, see it scale differently on different game engines capped at 100 um, we're getting at about 30, almost 33 millisecond latency. I wanted to test my settings, which was basically like the settings that I showed you guys that I would recommend to actually be able to see people, but still kind of have low. So 1080p, but the textures were high and anisotropic filtering was high and the view distance quality was high. Medium preset, I, I didn't test in each individual setting. I just tested the ones that sort of mattered. And then I just went with a medium preset, which was just everything in medium. And then the ultra preset, which was everything in ultra, just so you can see how it scales, guys. And it really comes down to your card, GPU usage, and FPS at the end of the day. But medium preset, obviously our latency went up similar to our 1440p low results. So 17.47 milliseconds there. Okay. Now I'm going to test absolute everything cranked up to the max, 1080p. And we're getting at about 21.64 milliseconds. Yeah, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage playing this in, in complete max, um, but that pretty much covers all the settings. Hope you found the video useful, guys. Please subscribe and like. I'd appreciate the support. And yeah, take it easy, guys. Enjoy ranking up the weapons because it's pretty damn rough in this game. Took like a day to unlock one gun. Take care, guys. See you in the next video. Cheers.